Hello everybody. The reason I've got my legs closed, I know it's probably a first for a lot of you to see me with my legs closed, is because I'm gonna put some safety tech on Phil and the safety tech is behind me. So I'm now going to reveal, <gasps> I'm gonna have this rollover bar. It's gonna be put on Phil. It's actually quite weighty. I would estimate this at about 14 kilograms, but it doesn't matter because Phil is packing some serious power now. But once this is fitted, I can quite happily roll Phil and then I will not die. Why are you shaking your head, Ethan? Oh, and I've also got a special guest, Gareth. Gareth's back. We're gonna put this on Phil tonight. And it's only gonna take one hour. Even Rob's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna estimate three hours to do this and then other bits and pieces, odds and sods. And then Phil's just gonna, Phil's gonna look really cool with that one. I mean, you're looking quite cool with that already. This is really cool. Yeah. Let's do it. The plan for today is to install a rollover bar to fill. Then, time permitting, side protection bars will go in, followed by a boot rack install to transform my little MX-5 into a car capable of carrying stuff. With all these important things in place, I'll have a race prep GT car that's as safe as a Volvo and as practical as a really small van. We start by removing the seats and rolling back the carpet on the parcel shelf. So under here there's a bolt, so we're going to take that off, and then after that we're going to take this little clip part over here off and there should be a bolt under there. But don't worry about breaking this because this whole thing is coming off anyway. We take out the seat belt mounts, unbolt the cabin brace, and then undo the bolts to the metal plate that covers the back of the fuel tank. So the next thing we need to do is we need to take off this shrouding, which is very easy. Again, it's just another, another bolt that comes off here. It's got a little hat on him. He's a happy little chappy. If you pull that away from the door, or you just hack it apart like Alex. Then it's no, totally no, awesome. no, I pulled it, I pulled it apart rather expertly, I believe. Ooh, slidey, slidey over these plastic doobries. Ah, nice. No, that was... So, a top tip, if you're gonna have a metal pot with all your valuables... Make sure it's magnetic. Yeah, and don't put it on plastic because if you're a clumsy monkey, then you're just gonna just knock it over. An important thing to remember when installing the rollover bar is that you don't need to disconnect any of the wiring that you'll find under the metal plate. The bar slots in with everything connected. Next, we free the aforementioned wires from their plastic clips, which releases the metal plate. One more cable to unbolt and it's time for a measure up. Fancy catching? Go for it. Three. Oh. <laughs> oh. Don't f*** it up. <laughs> I'm gonna just throw it like that. Yeah, yeah, Ready? Yeah, yeah. Three, right. two, one. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. oh, should we do it again? Just attempt fake. Okay. Okay, okay. one more okay. time. One more time. Three, two, two one. one. Oh, yeah. Done. Okay, okay. Third yeah. time lucky? No, no, no. Do you no. want to go through the back? No. 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 <laughs> Three, two, two one. one. Oh, yes. After we're done being recklessly awesome, we try and slot in the roll bar, but as expected, we need to do some cutting to free up space before marking up for imminent drilling. Okay, so because space is very limited and because we've got this big old ro roll bar that needs to go into a very, very small space. Um, if we see here, there is a plate that needs to be moved. Um, now a very easy and quick way of doing it, which took me probably about 30 seconds, would be to use some tin snips. If your mind works slightly differently and you've got loads of time, you've got loads of time on your hands, okay. clearly. And then you just make a whole lot of sparks. I mean, I'm already done, so I'm just waiting for you. So um, go for it. Are you happy now? Way faster than yours. No, this took 30 seconds. So if you don't have an that angle was grinder like at home. Seconds. What? That was 30 seconds per cut. And if you... it was totally awesome. Way more awesome than Okay, I'll awesome. admit that. But if you don't have an angle grinder at home, then you can pick up some tin snips. How much are they? Probably a few quid. A couple of quid. Get the job done and you don't risk like burning down a whole warehouse. Which one wins? You decide. Gareth and I then bend and pry the metal away from their spot welds, which frees up enough room to slide the roll bar in place. Now we measure up. So the trick with this is obviously to avoid all of the wires. You want uh, you want the bar going behind the wires. Otherwise, you're going to have bad times. Can you see that poking through there? So apparently, we've been told that that's a positive supply for the car. So we really don't want to be pushing any bits of metal through that. 
but we haven't, so we're totally awesome. So now we need to um, take a pen and then uh, just mark through the holes and then start drilling. That's where the fun starts. We've put the roll bar in and we've marked up where the holes need to be drilled. So if you come and have a little look here, Mr. Ethan, the holes for the roll bar are one, two, three, four. And then there are also five and six there. The two, two at the end here, they're gonna be a massive faff, aren't they? We have an absolute massive mission to drill those out. I mean, how, can we take this plate off? I mean, that, well, I mean, that could work. I, ideally, you would use something like a 90 degree chuck or head of the drill. But in this case, I think we're just gonna have to drill it on the piss, which is not ideal, but. As long as we get things. the hole drilled. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna center punch the start of each hole. So find the center, and that is a center punch. And what that does is it dents in the metal so that the drill that has something to start on. I reckon the ones back down here are gonna be really hard work, but we'll see how that goes. Once Gareth center punches all the holes, it's time to start drilling. So on our pilfering skills, we found this. That's got good length, but it looks... So that, that might actually do the trick, because what is lacking here is scope to get these got to believe. You just gotta so we've got yeah, one, two off. on that side so and one on that two. side. Yep. Awesome. Always remember your goggles for safety. What did I hit there? Who knows? Sweet. But That's it's done. not the paper tape. Okay, so a quick progress update for you. We've noticed that there is only one plate that goes here on the rear, and that will go underneath the car, and then the bolts will go through into here. But there is no plate for the front of the car, so all you're relying on really is a bolt and a washer. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to go through the side here. There are, excuse me, two holes there. They weren't 100% necessary to do, so I was told, but because there is no plate for the front, we are gonna go through the side here as well. As I unbolt the seatbelt reels, Gareth drills the holes for the side mounts. Alex is putting in these bolts here, and so Alex doesn't need to use brute force and just literally bend everything. So what we've done is we've thread locked these bolts in here so that Alex doesn't have to use brute force and bend everything. So they should hold everything nicely in place without any vibrations wobbling stuff loose. But to make sure I'm going to use brute force as well because I don't know any other way. <laughs> so all you need is a little dab of Loctite or thread lock uh, just on the tip, just on the bit of the thread that you're tightening and just whack the bolt over it. But it doesn't work obviously if you've done the bolt up and then you just put it on the end. Does it, Alex? No, Gareth, as you pointed out, because I then had to undo the nuts and then we put it on the bolts. So and now I'm redoing. Done fast. Oh, yeah. Next, the plates for the rear feet of the roll bar are bolted in place. For better access, we take both of the wheels off. Right, so as you can see now, we have got the bolts poking through from the top down to the bottom. Uh, so we've put the plate in there at the back and then uh, the front legs will be attached just using this washer and a nut so that it will go like so. Obviously don't forget to use your thread lock as well just to make sure that nothing moves because you want to be safe and locked in and that's what thread lock does. So you just want to put some of this thread lock on the bolt like so and then chuck on your washer and your nut and then that's going nowhere and then repeat the process all the way around and then you have one super tight roll bar
Right, so the main rollover bar is in. Lots of bolts, lots of nuts. It's looking sweet and it is rigid as hell. Uh, now we've found some of these side bars, side impact protection bars, a bit like a Volvo. It's gonna be safer than the Volvo. That just sit inside there and hopefully don't encroach too much on me clutch kicking and just being a general badass. It's 10.40 and we haven't had dinner yet, so how are you feeling? Yeah. But we've got we've got like 33 pounds worth of steak and stuff. And meanwhile, Mr. Tim over there, Mr. Tim White, owner of a really nice Mark II MX5, is putting on a little uh, little boot rack for me because I quite like a boot rack and I'd like to be able to carry some bikes on this. Basically, I want to make this the most practical badass car in the land. So let's get cracking. For the sidebars, we start by lining each bar into position. Then, just like with the rollover bar, we mark the holes with a pen, center punch, and then get the grill out. Right, so this rack is held on by five clamps, two on each side to pin it loosely centered. And then there's a final one at the front here that just stops the rack from sliding off. So in principle, it's solid. Once it's all tightened up, this should uh, do the trick quite nicely for long trips into Middle Europe. With the boot rack nearly there, it's time to bolt the sidebars into place. Gareth starts by tripping over the sidebar and then tripping over it again for good measure. Alex has just put all the bolts in. Yeah, but I haven't tightened the plates. I haven't tightened them. I remember the plates <laughs> on this side. <laughs> oh man, it's 11 o'clock and I haven't had my steak. Get off my <laughs> Uh, it, that makes me happy. I'm hungry and tired. With Phil's new side protection in place, the carpet is cut and then folded around the new metal. All that's left to do now is to bolt the seatbelt mount back into place, which reveals an almighty cock up. Okay, so in a job that I joked was going to take an hour or two hours, it's now taken a lot longer. So we started at about half past six. It's now Gareth. Midnight. Oh, it's yeah. mostly 12 o'clock at night. Yeah, and uh, we've both got work to go to in the morning, obviously. And what is the problem? Basically, the bolt will not go into the uh, seat belt mount anymore. It's just cross-threading. It's not happy, is it? So it turns out that we should have maybe mounted these first, lined these holes up for the seat belt mounts, and then marked off the little holes here and then started drilling those out rather than the other way around. So if you're watching this at home kids, don't screw up like we did because yeah. then you'll be about five hours instead of two or three hours. And now we're having to get really inventive. As the seat belt mount bolt will no longer screw into the hole, we drill straight through so we can ram a huge bolt in. At least we try to do that anyway. Okay, so uh, things have taken yet another turn. Um, so we basically cannot get the bolt through here, which means that my seat belt cannot be mounted. So um, the decision has been made to bin the seat belts and instead we're going to fit this bar which is going to hold some harnesses for both the passenger and the driver. So I'm going to be rolling around now and fill with harnesses. Completely unintentional but the way that the things have gone and the way that things always do go when you're trying to work on a project and you think it's going to be pretty, pretty simple, um, it hasn't, it's gone completely, it's cocked up. But yeah. Harnesses for Phil. Go team. To install the harness bar, we drill one hole on each side of Phil. I then attempt to bolt it in, which takes up all of my patience. Oh, oh, oh yeah. My patience is tested to the limit when I realize that the harness is needed to slide over the bar first. My life. With the harnesses on, we bolt up and tighten the bar. Next, we put the seats back in and adjust the harnesses to fit my body. We ran out of time to chop up and replace the metal parcel shelf cover, so I've saved that job for a rainy day. With the carpet now rolled out again, we can officially say that tonight's rollover bar, sidebars, harness bar and boot rack adventure is done. All we need to do is fit Phil with a big brake upgrade and he'll be race ready. Expect to see that video in a few weeks. Hope you enjoyed this um more complicated than we thought video. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, 
Oh yeah. That's looking good. 